the last little thing we need to talk about with political parties is we need to spend some time on these parties that don't really matter. So we're going to talk about third parties or minor parties uh, and talk about the ways that they impact politics. They're funny little things because the main point of a political party is to win an election, and these parties know that that's not really what they're doing. So we want to explore how minor parties can impact politics and what they can do to impact the major parties. Our objective today, we want to describe the role of minor parties. Um, and so we're going to talk about all the different things that minor parties do. We want to be able to explain how they can impact the major parties in the party system. So the question today we'll be answering is what do minor parties do? The first thing we're going to do today is discuss the role of minor parties in politics. So we're going to talk about all the different things that they do. Um, this right here, this is Ralph Nader. Uh, Ralph Nader ran for president a whole bunch of times, but he's going to be a great example of a third party candidate because Ralph Nader uh, ran for election, you know, several presidential elections, but most notably in the 2000 presidential election and may have like been the reason that George W. Bush won over Al Gore. So we'll talk about how minor parties can uh, impact elections and impact major parties and their election results. First, let's make sure we get a good understanding of what a minor party is. Um, we're going to call these minor parties, or you can call them third parties, uh, but that's those are just the terms we use in U.S. politics, probably third parties more often. But this is just any party that's not the Democrat or the Republican Party, so any party other than the two major parties. They are political parties because they do the main thing political parties do, which is they run candidates for office. So people run for office attached to a party label here. That makes them a political party. Because of the election systems that we use here in the United States, especially our single-member district um, elections in Congress and our electoral college winner-take-all system for president, they don't have any chance of winning. They, they definitely don't have a fair chance of winning. But they compete anyway. Uh, they compete in these elections even though they know that they're unlikely to win these elections. And so let's take a look at why they bother doing that. So some good things for minor parties is, you know, they don't have the pressure of having to win. Uh, so one of the reasons they participate is they are able to put the focus back onto issues, especially issues that they pick. Um, any two-party race... Um, any race where there's really only two candidates that are getting any attention, all we do is focus on the candidates. We don't really talk about their policies that much. We spend a lot more time focusing on what kind of person they might be, how they communicate, all these like silly things that don't matter about how they would do the job. But minor parties can uh, force some discussion onto the political issues instead of on the candidates in the race. The other thing minor parties can do here, it's related, but oftentimes we'll have both of our major party candidates trying to avoid um, a controversial issue. They'll try to avoid saying stuff that would turn off any voters. And uh, third party candidates can take stances on these issues and it forces the major party candidates to respond. So when minor parties run, they're able to uh, change the focus of the election back onto policies. The role that third parties have that have the biggest impact on all of us is that they can play what we call a spoiler role. What that means is that third parties can cause a major party to lose votes and possibly win the election. Third parties can have a huge impact on the outcome of the election here. We call this the spoiler effect because votes for the third party are most likely votes that are taken away from the major party that has the closest similar ideological beliefs. So like if there's a third party on the left and people vote for that third party, those people, if they only had a choice between Democrats and Republicans, we can assume that most of them would choose the Democrat. And so this is why we say they're taking votes away from the party that shares their ideology the most. Um, for this reason, like major party supporters, Democrats and Republicans, they usually have like really strong opposition to the third party that they share the most ideas with. Like Democrats hate the liberal third parties and Republicans hate the conservative third parties because they end up damaging the major parties in the elections. 
let's try to visualize how this works. So I'm going to take a look here at our political spectrum. Uh, here we see that there's an election with more Democratic votes than Republican votes, right? Here's our spectrum, our small government on the right, our big government on the left, and we have most of the Americans in the middle here. In this particular election, the Democrats got more votes than the Republicans, so they would have won. Now, this was an election with only Democrats and Republicans competing. So what would happen if a third party on the left came in? In this same situation, if the Green Party were to enter the race, the Green Party would probably take away some of the most liberal voters. The Green Party is a party on the left, a very liberal party. So now, in this election, Democrats have less votes than the Republicans do, even though overall there's more liberal voters than conservative voters. So when the Green Party entered the race, the Green Party hurt the major party that they share ideology with. And in this case, it caused the Republicans to have the most votes of the three parties, even though there's a majority of liberal voters. So this is what we mean when we say spoiler roll. Let's take a minute and look at what the spoiler roll looks like uh, in a real election. And so let's take a minute and explore the 2000 election between George W. Bush and Al Gore. Um, Al Gore is the Democrat. George W. Bush is the Republican. Al Gore got more popular votes across the whole country than George W. Bush. In the state of Florida, it was very close. And there was a recount and the Supreme Court stepped in and ordered the recounting of votes to be stopped. Um, but the official final count has George W. Bush winning the state of Florida by 537 votes. You guys know how the Electoral College works. That means he got all of Florida's 25 electoral votes. Now, in the 2000 election, Ralph Nader, who we were talking about, he ran as a candidate for the Green Party. Uh, that year, in the state of Florida, he got more than 97,000 votes. Okay, Remember, 500 votes separated George Bush and Al Gore. Ralph Nader, a candidate for the Green Party, which would be a more liberal party than the Democratic Party, got 97,000 votes. If we had only given voters the two options of George Bush and Al Gore, it's safe to assume that most Green Party voters would be Al Gore voters. And so Al Gore would have won the election by several thousand votes. Um, we actually, they, they polled uh, the Green Party voters after, after this happened, and 45% of Green Party voters said that they would have voted for Al Gore. 27% said that they would have actually voted for George Bush, and 28% said that they were, you know, only motivated by Ralph Nader, so they just wouldn't have voted. So we could, we can, we can assume about half of those votes would go to Al Gore, and about a quarter of those votes would go to George Bush, and about a quarter of those votes just wouldn't have happened at all. So since the outcome here was George Bush winning by 500 votes, if Ralph Nader had not want, run then Al Gore would have won the state of Florida and Al Gore would have been the president after the year 2000. We had a similar situation in the 2016 election. And um, we have another Green Party candidate, Gil, Jill Stein. And um, some people like to say that Jill Stein caused Hillary Clinton to lose the election to President Trump. But let's take a look at these numbers a little more closely and see if we think that's actually true. So in the 2016 election, Clinton lost Michigan and Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. Um, together, that's 46 electoral votes, which would have meant uh, that Clinton won the election and Trump uh, lost the election in 2016. So let's take a look at those state totals here. In Michigan, um, Trump won by 10,000 votes. But Jill Stein, the more liberal candidate than Hillary Clinton, got 50,000 votes in Michigan. In Pennsylvania, Trump won by 46,000 votes and Jill Stein got 49,000 votes. Um, and in Wisconsin, Trump won by 22,000 votes and um, Jill Stein got 31,000 votes. So technically, the math does mean that that is possible, right? People who assume that every single Green Party vote would have been a Hillary Clinton vote uh, can point to these stats and say that, yes, Jill Stein cost Hillary Clinton the election. But 
Let's think back to what happened in 2000. 97,000 voters voted for Ralph Nader. That did not mean that 97,000 of them were going to vote for Al Gore. It, for, in that case, it was about half. So it's completely unreasonable for us to assume that all of these Jill Stein voters in 2016 would have turned into Hillary Clinton voters. Right? We can look at Michigan here. So Trump won Michigan by 10,000 and Jill Stein got 51,000 votes. So in Michigan, it probably is true that Jill Stein hurt Hillary Clinton and possibly cost her the election. Right? We probably assume about half of those votes would be Hillary Clinton votes instead. And in that case, Hillary Clinton would beat Trump in Michigan. But that's not enough for Hillary Clinton to win the election. If we look at Pennsylvania, that's only a 3,000 vote difference. If we look at Wisconsin, it is less than a 10,000 vote difference. So in those two states, it's probably not possible that Hillary Clinton would have won Pennsylvania or Wisconsin. And so she couldn't have won the election here. If we follow those patterns of 2000, we've got to remember that, sure, this definitely does hurt. Like when the Green Party runs, it hurts the Democratic Party more. But every Green Party voter would not be a Democratic voter. Right. We can we can think of those patterns a little bit and probably half of them would be Democratic voters. Maybe a quarter of them would be Republican voters. But we have to remember a lot of those people would just stay home if they didn't have that third choice. So the spoiler role is super important. Uh, th this is one of the main things we need to pay attention to when we think about minor parties. Uh, but we do want to also remember that you know minor parties force issues back into focus on the election and all that. And so we see what minor parties do. And now let's look at the reasons why minor parties can't really compete fairly.